Hello and welcome to Health Fit, the healthy lifestyle show, or should I say, Namaste, as that is the name of today's episode. You will find that fitness and health is not always about getting sweaty. Sometimes the best thing to do about our bodies is de-stress and breathe out all of the negative vibes we collect during our daily routine. We will start with a short segment of Power Yoga where you can follow along similarly to episode 3 of season 1. We will follow up with a kitchen segment on tea and its many benefits, both mental and physical. Mika will continue the topic by giving us more advice on how to stay stress-free and we will conclude with a friendly conversation which will help us understand the concept of meditation and how it is done. And now, back to Warrior 2. Hello everyone and welcome to our exercise segment. I hope you recall our yoga episode from season one because today we will be taking a similar approach except we will be practicing power yoga. Our guest instructor is actually a yoga teacher here at MTSU with over 1,880 hours of yoga training. But let's hear it from her personally. Welcome Jennifer Ross Thank Craze. Thank Hi, you. thank you so Hi. much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Great. So Jennifer, tell us a little bit more about yourself and um, how you started with yoga. Well, I started by just driving by a studio for about two years before I got the mm -hmm. courage to finally stop and go in. Mm -hmm. And my very first class, I was hooked. And I just started practicing every time the doors were open. And then I kind of fell into teaching. I was offered mm -hmm. an assistantship and they offered yoga and I was a student and that's so cool. I started teaching, then got my teacher training. So a little mm -hmm. bit backwards. Yeah, that's um, okay. That is perfectly okay. I've been doing it ever since. And love Wonderful. It. So how is power yoga different from other types of yoga? Um, in power yoga, you're usually moving a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Um, the poses can be a little bit more intense, maybe with longer or stronger holds. And you're, there's usually some kind of heat, whether you're generating your own heat mm -hmm. or if there's external heat that's okay. provided in the room. Great. So um, let's go ahead and get started. But okay. before we do, can you tell us a little bit of what we'll be doing? Well, we're going to use a sun salutation template, which mm -hmm. is really what power yoga is based on, the sun salutations form A and B. Okay. Um, but in power yoga, you have a little bit of creativity, so you can start to kind of add other poses in. Great. Um, but hopefully you'll see that theme as we go through several cycles of this. Perfect. Okay. Let's get started. So we'll start at the front of our mat. Feet can be touching or inner hips distance and just rooting through the feet, standing tall, spine is long. We're going to try to breathe in and out through the nose. And I'll cue the breath um, as the breath is really the heart of the practice. So with the inhale breath, we're going to reach our arms overhead. Palms can come together. You can look up. With your exhale, you're going to fold. Flat spine, legs bend, hands come to floor, head drops. Inhale, extend through the spine, look forward, more with the chest than the gaze. Hands come down, you're gonna step back into plank. We have some options here. I'm gonna slow this down just a bit. So one option is you can bring your knees down and okay. lower all the way down to the floor. That's one option. The other option is you can have knees down and just hover. And then the third option is you can be in a full plank and come down and hover. We call this four limb staff. The other options are cobra. It can be a high cobra, a low cobra, or even sphinx. Mm -hmm. And the more intermediate position of this is gonna be upward dog. So the toes can be curled under and the thighs are up, or even feet flat, thigh bones up. Okay. So you have lots of options. Yes, yeah, a lot of options. <laughs> and then from here, we'll go into downward dog. So you can roll or flip the feet. Legs can be bent or straight. We typically hold this position longer. Mm -hmm. So we're breathing here in and out through the nose, trying to balance the weight between the hands and the feet. As you inhale, you'll look forward. Feet can step, walk, or you could even jump your feet forward. Chest reaches out. Exhale, head into legs. 
Inhale, rise up, reach up, look up, palms touch if you can. And then you exhale, arms down, only to do it again. Great. <laughs> and we'll add on again. from here. <laughs> so inhaling, upward salute, arms reach up, big breath. Exhaling, fold forward with control. Inhale, extend through spine, prepare for plank. Alternating the legs, step back. Remember the options, knees up or down, all the way to the floor or hover. So exhale, inhale, upward dog, cobra or sphinx. Exhale, downward dog. Okay, let's move on. Let's add a warrior one. So as you look forward, right foot all the way to the front, back heel down. Inhale, rise up, palms can touch or be separate. As you exhale, hands down. Step back plank. Now if you get tired with the plank, you could always just go to down dog and wait, or you could even come to the knee. So that's always an option. Another option too is you can lift the leg and then pull it forward as you step forward. So lots of options again. Pivot the back foot, inhale up, warrior one, exhale, hands down. Choice to go to down dog or step back plank. Knees can be up or down. Remember, you can either hover or go all the way down. Inhaling, cobra up dog, sphinx. Exhaling, downward dog. And downward dog kind of becomes what you might call a resting position. <laughs> it's relative to the other things we're doing. So a good opportunity to slow the breath down. Working on some strength and endurance here. With the inhale, look forward, step walk, feet to the front, chest reaches out, fold and exhale, inhale to rise, exhale, return even standing. Okay, how we doing? Great. Okay, let's add on, bend legs, arms reach up, chair pose, keeping the heels down. Exhaling as you fold, feels very similar here. Inhale to lengthen through spine, prepare for plank. Step back, your choice. Exhale as you lower. Inhale, up dog, cobra or sphinx. Exhale, downward dog. From down dog, if you wanna go ahead and lift the leg, that's an option, you can reach it high, bend it, step it through. Warrior two, we're gonna pivot the back heel at an angle. Left arm reaches forward and come all the way up. So this time, thighs back, belly in, chest lifted, reaching through the fingertips. We're gonna go ahead and take this into a side angle. So reaching forward, either arm to thigh, hand to floor. Arm can reach up or reaching over. Big side body stretch. And then pivot down, lunge. Pivot on the ball of the back foot, good. Step back plank and lower. Inhale, up dog cobra. Exhale, down dog. Okay, we got another side. Inhale, left leg, reach it up, bend it, sweep it through. Pivot the back foot, reach up, warrior two. Steady through the legs. So for more year two, we're gonna move into extended side angle. So either forearm to thigh or hand to floor, arm can reach up or over. Holding here, keeping the abdominals in, strong legs pressing through the feet. And then we'll pivot and turn. We'll step back into plank, remembering the options as you lower with your exhale breath. Inhaling, chest opens. Downward dog, exhaling. Holding downward dog longer than the other positions gives you an opportunity for some recovery. Breathing in and out through the nose, trying to slow the breath down. With the inhale, looking forward, feet to the front. Chest reaches out. Exhale as you fold in. Inhale to rise. And exhale, return even standing. Let's do one more and then we'll work on some balance. Sounds perfect. Chair pose, inhale. 
fold with your exhale. Inhale, extend. This is half standing forward fold. Step back plank. Lower with exhale. Inhale. Downward dog, exhale. Okay, from our downward facing dog, we're gonna inhale, lift the right leg up, get some height, bend the right leg, and then open your right hip. Get that nice side stretch. And then with inhale, as you pivot back forward, you're gonna pull the leg in, step it forward, big step. You'll drop the back heel, and we're gonna straighten the front leg and move into extended triangle pose. So hand can be high on the leg, it can be low, it can be all the way down on the floor, but you wanna to try to open through the, the chest. From here, we're gonna move into a balancing position. So go ahead and take left hand to the waist. You're gonna look down to the right. You'll bend the right leg, we're moving into half moon. You're gonna step the back foot in and lift the left leg. You can keep gaze down, hand on hip. You can start to open the hip and the chest, maybe reach the arm up. Option to bend the leg and reach for the foot. So there's always another place to take it. You won't get bored. And then we can go right back. We're gonna go back into triangle pose. Step back, reach up, and then we'll pivot down. Step back plank, and we'll go through the same options here. Lower as you, as you exhale, excuse me. Inhale, chest opens. Exhale, downward dog. Take a couple of extra breaths here. We've got one more side. We'll do that same sequence. Okay, you ready for the left? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Inhale, lift the left leg up, get some height, bend it. Keep your abdominals in, open through the left hip and then pull the left leg forward, big step. Adjust the back foot, front leg straightens. We're moving into that extended triangle pose. Good. And then hand takes the waist, we'll look down. Reach hand toward floor, you're gonna start to step the back foot in. You can take your time here. You can keep the left leg as bent as needed as you start to lift the left leg. Maybe you keep your gaze down. Maybe you turn it to the side and reach up. Breathing here. Going back into triangle pose. Front leg bends, back foot finds the floor. Open up. And then pivot. Step back plank. Move with breath, lower. Chest opens, downward dog. Couple breaths here. I'm looking forward, step, or you could walk feet to the front. Chest extends out, exhale, fold in. Inhale to rise. Look up and exhale, arms down. Okay, feeling a little bit warmer? Yes. Okay. Sure. How about tree pose? Can All right, let's try? try tree pose. So maybe take hands to waist. Okay. Strong left leg. I'm gonna inhale, lift the right leg up. And you could stay here or you can open the leg to the side, reach down, grab foot, and then kind of Hoist it as high into the inseam of the pant as you can, or the leg. And a lot of times people say, oh, my foot slides. Yes. <laughs> the trick is you gotta press your foot into your thigh, and the thigh has to press back into your foot. Engage the abdominals, hands can move oh, to heart center. It. Yeah. Yes. It's like the right is pushing into the left, and the mm -hmm. left is pushing into the right. Perfect. And then grow tree branches up, and maybe even open them out. <laughs> Awesome. Great. Thank you, Jennifer, for joining us today and sharing your power yoga practice with us. And thank you, everyone, for watching and participating. Don't go anywhere. The Health Fit Kitchen is next. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> My pleasure.
Hey there, this is the Health Fit Kitchen. Today we're going to focus on all the amazing benefits of a worldwide loved beverage, tea. Tea has many different nutritional and health benefits that make it a winner over coffee, which tends to be much higher in caffeine. Also, it is zero calories and can be consumed hot or cold, creating different flavors depending on how you choose to prepare it. I have four different types of teas here that I'm going to try and discuss further. Let's start with black tea. Next to the glass here, you will see an example of the loose, le loose tea leaves, which were diffused to create the black, dark, coffee-like color. Black tea is a familiar tea choice and tends to have the highest caffeine percentages. Black tea leaves undergo a process called oxidation, which is how the green leaves get their brownish black color. This tea is the basis for creating teas like chai and other instant teas. The antioxidants in black tea can prevent cancer, lower risk for heart attack, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and much more. This is the best tea to drink to start your day and the best option if you're trying to drink less coffee but not willing to completely give up caffeine like myself. <laughs> Next up, we have green tea. Green tea is another familiar tea choice and gets its name from the color of its leaves. Since it is not oxidized like the black tea, benefits include lower, lower blood pressure, reduced risk of heart disease and cholesterol levels, improved bone density, improved many, uh, memory, and <laughs> many other things as well. The list just goes on. Since there are several different types of green tea, from Sancho to gunpowder green to matcha like we have here, this tea is actually very special because it is a powder and unlike, um, unlike this one here, which is loose leaf. So the whole leaf is ground down and it can be incorporated in food as well. So try it in a smoothie, some pancakes, stir fry, and even guacamole. <laughs> Next up, let's look at this herbal tea. Again, you will see that it's loose leaf. It is slightly um, more ground than the black tea over there. So herbal tea is made from steeping flowers, leaves, seeds, roots, and stems of various plants and flowers. It usually has no caffeine and is the most natural tea. It offers a variety of antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and health benefits range from sleeping aids to inflammation reducers to, de de to detoxifying the body. It all depends on the ingredient. This is a chamomile and lavender based herbal tea, which is great for relieving stress and better sleep. And finally, let's look at this last tea, which is actually white tea. It looks similar to our herbal tea. So white tea has the highest amount of health benefits since it undergoes the least amount of processing. Benefits include skin care, oral health, cancer preventatives, antioxidant agents, anti-aging properties, diabetes support, improves cardiovascular disease, weight loss, and relieves symptoms from the common cold. Wow, that is a lot. This is a white peach tea giving you a light fruity punch and great for an afternoon delight. Remember that teas come in all types of flavors, mixtures, and variations. So no matter what type you try, you can be drinking your way to a healthier life by adding a cup of tea a day. Stay tuned for active updates with Mika while I enjoy this tea. Hey there, this is Active Updates with Mika Cherfan, and I'm here with some healthy tips and tricks for staying stress-free while you pursue an active lifestyle. We've already discussed how drinking tea and doing things like yoga can help you relax and wind down, but what else is suitable for de-stressing after a week of hard work? First and foremost, I'd like to remind you how important it is to de-stress. Many people, especially dedicated athletes, are restless both in mind and body. But without much needed rest periods, your muscles will not recover properly from exercise and you'll end up overtraining, which can lead to chronic pain, poor performance, and frequent injuries. All things that we should be trying to avoid. So with that being said, let's talk about what, is a good, what a good rest day should look like, both physically and nutritionally. Since most people are aware that at least 30 minutes of exercise per day is recommended, you may be hesitant to completely cut exercise out of your schedule for a day. And that's okay. Resting doesn't mean you have to lay in bed and stay sedentary all day. It just means you need to refrain from your normal training capacity so that your body has a chance to de-stress and recover. If you're used to doing vigorous exercise pretty frequently, resting could mean just taking it down a notch and doing something light. For example, if you normally lift heavy weights for an hour at the gym, spend that same hour of your rest day just walking on the treadmill. You can de-stress even further by bringing a book to read while you walk or listening to something that makes you happy. Some feel-good music or a stand-up comedy recording is bound to put a smile on your face. 
If you do choose to skip out on light activity during your rest day, there are tons of other things you can do to ease your mind. For example, you could spend some time doing your favorite hobby or try something new that's been on your mind. Is there a recipe you've been dying to try but haven't gotten around to making? Now's the time. Do you have a gift card you've been waiting to spend or a massage you've been owing yourself? Well, make it happen. Everyone has different methods for de-stressing. So experiment with different techniques and find what's best for you. Maybe you want to hang out with a friend or take your dog to the park. Or maybe you just want to stay in, watch a movie, and pamper yourself a little. Anything that clears your mind and helps you feel rested is sufficient. Now, when it comes to eating on rest day, remember that you don't need as many calories as you do on training days, but you do still need high quality nutrients. A moderate amount of carbs, some high protein foods, and a good source of antioxidants are key to good recovery. Without these things, your mind may feel relaxed, but your body is still in a state of stress as it scrambles to repair your tissues without the necessary resources to do so. Balancing good nutrition with relaxing activities is the best recipe for reducing stress while you rest and recover from the exhausting effects of consistent exercise. No matter who you are or what your sport is, you deserve to take a break occasionally. So after some hard work, treat yourself guilt-free with your favorite ways to de-stress. Thanks again for tuning in. This has been Active Updates with Mika. See you next time. Stay active. Hey there, and welcome back to Health Fit for today's interview segment where we will be talking about meditation and how mental health can impact your overall health. Today we will be joined by Caitlin Apple Sammy, who is a massage therapist here in town. Hey Caitlin, thank you so much for being here with us today. So let's go ahead and get started with a basic question of tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background and what you do. Cool. Um, so I am a massage therapist. Okay. Um, over at Synergy Wellness Spa here in Murfreesboro. Um, so I focus a lot on prenatal care, um, postpartum care, mm -hmm. uh, and then I do a lot of energy work, Reiki. Um, so yeah, it's really okay, what I do. Neat. <laughs> and I suppose you also practice um, this on your own time and um, yeah. it's part of your hobby? Yeah, I do. Well, Reiki can also be like part of like your self-care routine. So okay. I try to do that as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. yeah. How does meditation tie in with your lifestyle? So meditation, I guess like kind of like before I came in, I sat in my car and I was like, okay, let's do some breathing work before I go in. So I was like kind of anxious. Um, so you can, I mean, I do that like every day. Like I'll sit in my car before I go to work or before I have a client, I'll just do some breath work and, you know, visualization okay. to kind of get me ready for whatever session I'm doing or what I'm about so to do. So you're saying meditation can be <laughs> as simple as that, just sitting in your car for say five minutes yeah. or 10 minutes. You don't actually have to sit down for like 30 minutes at a no. time. And <laughs> half the time, I don't even, I don't even like sit like, because you know everyone's always like okay you have to be on a yoga mat you have to be like mm -hmm. in pretty clothing and you know like be all like zen out and whatever but really like half of the time I am sitting in my PJs at my coffee table at my house and I'm just like okay chill out mm -hmm. think about like what kind of mindset I want to be in today and okay and you focus yeah. on that yeah center yeah. yourself around that is there something that you like to use that enhances your meditation regardless of how long your session might be? Um, yeah, I, sometimes I use incense, essential oils, um, I'll use crystals, like okay. I'm wearing stones right now that kind of like help with um, like balancing your mood and like keeping you calm and centered. Um, yeah. Okay, that's really interesting. So can you tell me how does a meditation relate to health and balance in our you know healthy um, set mindset so I think that well one like the whole mind body connection is such a big thing with me and like my practice mm -hmm. um, and I definitely believe that mental health and physical health go hand in hand like okay. they they're both equally as important um, and so I feel like with mental health like meditation really helps you you know if you have like really bad anxiety or depression or anger issues or mm -hmm. you know anything it helps you kind of like ground yourself and center yourself and just be like okay like I'm good everything's good and it lowers stress levels so that helps you function better in everyday life 
So, so with that being said, you would say that the goal of meditation is to center yourself and yeah. find balance. Yeah. How do you, for example, okay, I personally have always found it difficult to <laughs> meditate because I'm not quite sure how to exactly go about it. What's the, I mean, do you just sit down and just think or not think? It's very difficult for me to clear my mind. So what's the first step? What do you do when you sit down and meditate? Well, when I first started meditating, I thought it was stupid. And I was like, <laughs> there is no way that I can just sit here and not think about anything. Because like, mm -hmm. I'm constantly doing things. I'm con my mind is constantly going. And it's, it's definitely a learning process. Um, but I don't know. I feel like, because like, when I first started meditating, I couldn't shut my mind off. Like I was like, wait, like the water is still running in the kitchen. Or like I need to go do this right now. Or I need to go buy these things. Um, but it's it's like a self growth kind of thing. Like you, you, it's like you're teaching yourself how to focus. You're teaching yourself how to not let the like chatter in your brain take over. Okay. So is meditation a skill that you can improve in? Yeah. Yeah. I think like over time. So like say like you first start meditating for like five minutes a day and then mm -hmm. you go to like 10 minutes and then 20 minutes and then an hour um and yeah it's definitely something you can grow in um it's you know does um does meditation have any hidden dangers to it or can you you know overdo it maybe i think the only not even like dangerous thing but the only thing that could come up um since it is like part of self-growth and self-healing. Um, you know, if you did like a guided meditation on healing trauma or something, it could be, it could bring up stuff like from your past that you don't really want to deal with yet or okay. reflect on. So it could be kind of triggering, I guess. Emotionally, um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like emotionally triggering. Okay. Um, but I mean, other than that, I don't think there's anything dangerous about it. Right. Um, I would just say if like, if you're if you're doing a meditation like that and you're like mm -hmm. trying to uncover old stuff, I would just say, you know, like make sure that you're in a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. Like be in your bed all cozy with blankets and pillows and candles or whatever <laughs> makes you happy. That sounds or, amazing right or now. Just be outside. <laughs> That's my life half of the time in bed with cozy blankets. <laughs> so how uh, do we know when we meditate, how do we know if we're doing it right? What's the sensation, I guess? Or and I assume it probably different it's probably different for everyone. Everybody yeah. has their own feeling that they experience, but is there any way we can know if we are doing it right? Um, I know a lot of people have told me like they get like a buzzy sensation like right here in their head um, or like feel tingly all over or you just kind of feel sleepy or spaced out. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually how I feel. I feel kind of like just like zoned out and like you know like that weird haze that you're in when you first wake up. Okay. That's that's how I feel. So I okay. Feel like Interesting. Are there any stigmas you would like to put an end to in regard to meditation? Um, kind of like how we said earlier, like you don't have to look a certain way or wow. set up your room a certain way to meditate. I feel like that's a big stigma is everyone's like, you have to look like a certain type of person to meditate mm -hmm. or you have to have a certain lifestyle to do that, which is totally not true. Um, I feel like meditation can be, you can be drawing and meditate. You mm -hmm. could be running and meditate. I do that half of the time. I'll go for a run and that's my meditation. Um, you can, you know, dancing can be a meditation. Yes, so, of course. Exercising yeah. is very much, yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right, and if we're interested in your services and learning more about meditation, how can we contact you? Um, I have a Facebook page, so okay. it's just Caitlin Applesammy Massage Therapy. Okay. Um, I also, this is really random, but I also just started a blog. It's a health and wellness blog. Nice. Um, so that's linked to my Facebook and my Instagram. Okay. So Do you have an email you would like to share with us? Um, it's just Caitlin Applesammy at gmail.com. Thank you, Caitlin, so much for being here with us today and sharing your knowledge with us. I hope that you enjoyed the interview. And to follow us on Facebook, please go to Facebook at The Health Fit Show. I'm Joanna, and we are Health Fit. Stay active.